Hello Squirrels and welcome to PPM6 TV. Today what it is is heavy metal microphones. <laughs> Solidly built microphones like this. Uh, Shure SM7B, which almost defines uh, solidly built. You could use this in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, it's a it's a mic that's uh, used in broadcast, podcast, and in studios for vocals and other things um, all around the world, and has been for years and years and years. And yet, the SM7B is not without its drawbacks. I mean, it, it's physically heavy. I think it's uh, uh, nearly 1.7 pounds. It will knacker the clutches in all your uh, stands. It's um, uh, fabulously uh, low output. Um, you, you need a lot of gain for it. And um, it's not cheap. You know, it's not a cheap... Well, we'll come to that later, but it's not a cheap microphone. So how come it's still so popular? Because it sounds great. And uh, I should say, you even get uh, some EQ on the back. You can change the, the curve if you want, though I'm going to leave it flat for our tests today. I've tried uh, mics from Aston and Heil and, and Bayer. And, um, you know, they all have their lovelinesses and their, and their positive things, but um, one does come back to the SM7B a lot. Um, it's, it's a great mic. But maybe, just maybe, this is the mic to dethrone it. This bad boy is a, a Gefell MD300. Now, I've had several Gefell mics on the channel, uh, courtesy of uh, John at Soundlink, who's the UK Gefell distributor, and he's kindly sent me this one. And uh, they've all been fantastic, utterly fantastic. But they are condenser uh, uh, mics <coughs> in the classic tradition. Who thought, who knew that uh, Gefell did um, uh, not just uh, dynamic mics, but a broadcaster podcaster mic, which is what this is. Um, it's um, robustly made, it's got a nice Nextel finish. Um, it's got no uh, EQ stuff on it, but it does have come with a built-in um, EQ curve as it were. It rolls off below 200 hertz down at 40. It's at uh, neg 20. So quite a significant roll off. Um, and it's got a 2 dB presence boost up to about 8k I think to help voices cut through. And just looking at the curves, to me it looks like it's got a significant advantage over the Shure in top end extension. But we'll, we'll come to that um, when we have a listen. So um, I, I've got a separate uh, um, suspension for this. Well, I'll show you it. Uh, here it is. It's a separate suspension. I'm going to do a, a, a video just about this uh, later on because it's quite an interesting bit of kit. Um, and uh, uh, however, Achilles heel, it's a little bit, it's definitely louder than the, the, the SM7B. Um, uh, however, it's definitely more expensive than the SM7B, although not, not completely out of ballpark. So um, let's see. If Gefell can dethrone the SM7B, or maybe as so often in life, you need both of them. Let's find out. Sure, SM7B, and uh, amplified by the RME Mixtasy with 70 dB of gain. This is uh, Franz Kafka, The Trial. Someone must have been telling lies about Joseph K, for without having done anything wrong, he was arrested one fine morning. Gefell MD300 uh, mixes C preamp with 70 dB again, and Franz Kafka's The Trial. Someone must have been telling lies about Joseph K, for without having done anything wrong, he was arrested one fine morning. His landlady's cook, who always brought him breakfast at 8 o'clock, failed to appear on this occasion. That had never happened before. K waited for a little while longer, watching from his pillow the old lady opposite, who seemed to be peering at him with a curiosity unusual even for her. But then, feeling both put out and hungry, he rang the bell. His landlady's cook, who always brought him his breakfast at eight o'clock, failed to appear on this occasion. That had never happened before. Kay waited for a little while longer, watching from his pillow the old lady opposite, who seemed to be peering at him with a curiosity unusual even for her. But then, feeling both put out and hungry, he rang the bell. At once there was a knock at the door, and a man entered, whom he had never seen before in the house. He was slim and yet well knit. He wore a closely fitting black suit, which was furnished with all sorts of pleats, pockets, buckles and buttons, as well as a belt, like a tourist's outfit, and in consequence looked eminently practical, though one could not quite tell what actual purpose it served. "'Who are you?' asked Kay. 
half raising himself in bed. But the man ignored the question, as though his appearance needed no explanation, and merely said, Did you ring? At once there was a knock at the door, and a man entered, whom he had never seen before in the house. He was slim and yet well knit. He wore a closely fitting black suit, which was furnished with all sorts of pleats and pockets, buckles and buttons, as well as a belt, like a tourist's outfit, and in consequence looked eminently practical. No one could not quite tell what actual purpose it served. Who are you? asked Kay, half raising himself in bed. But the man ignored the question, as though his appearance needed no explanation, and merely said, Did you ring? Anna's to bring me my breakfast, said Kay, and then with silent intensity studied the fellow, trying to make out who he could be. The man did not submit to this scrutiny for very long, but turned to the door and opened it slightly so as to report to someone who was evidently standing just behind it. Anna's to bring me my breakfast, said Kay, and then with silent intensity studied the fellow, trying to make out who he could be. The man did not submit to this scrutiny for very long, but turned to the door and opened it slightly so as to report to someone who was evidently standing just behind it. He says Anna is to bring him his breakfast. A short guffaw from the next room came in answer. One could not tell from the sound whether it was produced by several individuals or merely by one. Although the strange man could not have learned anything from it that he did not know already, he now said to Kay as if passing on a statement, It can't be done. The sinister opening of Franz Kafka's The Trial. On the Gefell MD300. So has the Gefell MD300 dethroned the mighty uh, Shure SM7B. Well, first remember, uh, the SM7B I used without any filters in it, uh, without any of the EQ uh, modifications you can make on the back. Um, it's um, it's definitely, you can you can hear the bottom end weight. Remember, this, this is uh, flat, uh, whereas the MD300 has that deliberate roll off below 200, um, allowing you to work it very close and also aiming for intelligibility for, for a sound that cuts through. That's also uh, reflected in the fact they put a 2 dB boost in up to about 8K. And I remember too, the MD300, I think, has just got a more extended top. So I think there's more sparkle, there's more brightness, um, and there is more of that intelligibility. Uh, with the MD300, which is a very, very deliberate uh, plan. Does that mean um, it's better than this? No, I think it means it's different. And if you want that warmth, some might say thickness, um, then then maybe the, the SM7B is the mic for you. I think Gefell have made a fantastic foray into um, podcaster, broadcaster, dynamic mics. You should hear this. It's very, very good indeed. I'm going to give it a run at the Neumann later on and possibly also the Heil and the Aston Stealth, and indeed um, the TG99, if I can uh, uh, dig that up. So plenty more to come from the uh, MD300. And also we'll have a, have a look at the uh, very interesting suspension that John Willett sent me. Um, so, uh, you know, don't throw away. Well, you can't throw it away. It's too heavy, isn't it? <laughs> you shouldn't be throwing away your SM7B. Um, it's still a great bit of kit. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, do, do subscribe. It does help. And come back soon. Bye for now.